وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As always, we begin praising Allah Asking Allah Azza wa to exalt the mention grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions. We are talking about the essence of the marriage contract. And this is before we go on to talk about huquq as zawjain the rights of the husband, the rights of the wife, and then marital discord, because we want to establish the terms and conditions, if you like. What are the terms and conditions? What am I even agreeing to when I marry? What are the what are the Essence, what's the essence of this contract? How is it How is it structured? How is it made up? And maybe many of the people watching this video are already married, but they don't, They themselves might not have known. They, they married in a customary way, you know. Somebody said, I offer you my daughter in marriage, and I said, Qabilt, I accepted it, and so on. But did they really know what they accepted? And did they really understand the basis upon which the nikah is built. So we said that one of the recommended actions in the nikah is the khutbatul haja. And there are three ayat that I just think they're so important to go over in the light of marriage. Now you could go over them in, in general in terms of khutbatul haja, but just to talk about them in the light of marriage. Three ayat. There is an ayah in Surah An-Nisa, an ayah in Surah Ali Imran, and an ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab. So as for the ayah in uh, Surah Ali Imran, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, and whenever the statement, O you who believe, comes in the Quran, this statement is intended for to, to catch you, to make you listen, to make you say, this is something Allah is telling me. And Allah is telling it to the husband and the wife in, in terms of nikah, because we're talking about nikah here. That Allah Azza wa is telling to the husband and the wife, Ya ayyuhalladheena aman, or you who believe. Ittaqullaha haqqa tuqati. Have taqwa of Allah as he deserves that you should have taqwa of him. Have taqwa of Allah to the extent that Allah deserves you to have taqwa of him. So remind ourselves again, what is taqwa? I tell you what it is. I'll, I'll give you a chance to pause the video and see if you can remember a good definition for a taqwa linguistically and Islamically. Have a think. So, inshallah ta'ala, you had to think about it. Linguistically, taqwa is to put a barrier between you and something that you are scared of. We give the example of smashing a glass on the floor, putting your shoes on. Uh, another example I often give if you've ever had an x ray, you saw the x ray technician goes behind the big lead screen to protect himself or herself from the rays, the x-rays that come out that could be harmful, that is also linguistically a taqwa. Put a barrier, put a shield between you and between something you're scared of. In Islam, it's to put a barrier or a shield between you, between Allah's punishment, his anger, his curse, and the hellfire by doing what Allah commanded and keeping away from what Allah prohibited. So that's what a marriage should be based upon. That's your ak. That's what your that's what your marriage is based upon. That's the asr. That's the the foundation that it's built upon. Is a taqwa. Is having that taqwa of Allah haqqa tuqati, as He deserves that you have taqwa of Him. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And do not die except as Muslims. How can you not? How can you choose in what situation you die? How can you choose? You can't choose how you die, right? Like I can't, I don't know if I'm going to die before I finish this video, after I finish this video, before I finish the series, after, when I'm old, when I'm young. I don't know when I'm going to die. So how can I die as a Muslim? Very simple. Live your life as a Muslim. Because generally speaking, Allahumma, if a person has ikhlas and with the rahmah of Allah and his fadl and his ihsan, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person will die the way that they lived. If they lived with ihsan, if they lived with ikhlas, if they lived with iman, they will die in that state. So the husband and the wife, they live Islam in their marriage. 
their marriage is built upon Islam and they live Islam in their marriage. The next ayah in Surah An-Nisa, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. O mankind, have taqwa of your Lord. Second time that taqwa has been mentioned. Ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqati. Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaqu rabbakum. Ittaqu rabbakum. Have taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single soul, Adam. Created from his wife, Hawa. And from them came out all the men and women. And that we talked about the very first establishment of the Muslim family in Islam was with Adam and Hawa. So Allah Azza wa Jal reminds you to have taqwa of Allah because how Allah Azza wa Jal started that huge family which is everyone on this earth from Adam and Hawa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bless your marriage and bless your family and bless your offspring if you have taqwa of him. Wattaqullah The third time have taqwa of Allah Alladhi tasa'aluna bihi The one that you ask by him so you say As'aluka billah, I ask you by Allah to do this. You took your wife as an amana from Allah. The one tasa'aluna bihi, you ask in his name. Wal arham, and fear Allah with regard to your relatives, the ties of kinship. Fear Allah with regard to the ties of kinship. That's one of the tafsir of the, of the ayah. Fear Allah with regard to the ties of kinship, your relatives. Fear Allah with regard to that. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Allah is always watchful over you. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, Surah Al-Ahzab. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. Yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa min yuta'illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azima. This is the fourth, I don't know, we fourth time now, fifth time now, that Allah Azza wa Jalla said, O oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, attaqu Allah haqqa tuqati. Then in Surah An-Nisa, Ya ayyuha al-nasu attaqu rabbakum, wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham. The fourth time, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, attaqu Allah, have taqwa of Allah. Wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. And say a statement that is correct and that is true. So this is the importance of being truthful in speech and speaking what's right. Say what's right. Qulu qawlan sadida. Say what is right. And that's so important in a marriage that the husband and the wife, they speak to each other. Qawlan sadida. They speak the truth. There's no lying. There's no betraying. There's no going behind each other's back. And they say what is right to each other. Falyakul. خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Let him say something good or don't say anything at all. What will happen if you say the right thing? قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا You say the right thing. You say what is correct and what is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do what? He will correct your deeds. He will correct your a'mal. He will correct your marriage. He'll make your marriage right. Even if your marriage is not right, يُصْلِحْ Allah will make it right. Allah will bring it back and make it right. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And Allah will forgive you your mistakes and your sins, including those things that happened in a marriage that you didn't intend. Allah will forgive you your sins. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, and that shows that marriage is based upon obedience to Allah and obedience to the Messenger, فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا That person has had the best success. If your marriage is based upon obeying Allah and obeying the Prophet and people talk about why does the wife obey the husband and why do the children obey the wife and the mother and the father and wow, this family unit is based upon ta'atullah wa ta'atu rasulih obeying Allah and obeying his Rasul salawatullahi wa salam alayhi It's not about obedience of one person to the other This is a side effect of structure in the family and following the commands of Allah but it's about obedience to Allah so a husband doesn't tell his wife to do something unless he knows this is ta'atullah wa ta'atu rasulih. Obedience to Allah and obedience to the Messenger Sallallahu And the wife doesn't listen to the husband except in that which is ta'atullah wa ta'atu rasulih. Obedience to Allah and obedience to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma, any, uh, she does it in the right way in, with the best etiquette, but she only her concern is obeying Allah. 
And a being her husband is a part of a being Allah as long as what the husband says is in line with and in agreement with obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's the true success. That's what success is really built upon. So I thought these three ayat are just so appropriate for the topic of marriage because all of them are said in the nikah. It's from the mustahabbat of the nikah to say the khutbat al-haja. And uh, of course, we haven't mentioned the whole khutbat al-haja. In alhamdulillah, in ahmadu, wa nasta'inu, wa nasta'afiru, wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina, wa min sayyati a'malina, man yahtihi allahu falamudilla lah, wa man yudlil falahadiya lah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله عبده ورسوله أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that all praises for Allah we praise Him we seek His help we ask His forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves the evil of our actions whoever Allah guides there is nobody who can misguide Him and Allah guides the one who what who works hard who is sincere for Allah and tries hard and whoever Allah misguides, because that person has preferred misguidance for themselves and turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla justly and fairly and with wisdom misguides them. There is nobody that can bring that person to guidance. فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ Who is it who can guide that person after Allah? Nobody can, can guide that person after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu is the messenger of Allah. Our lives, our deen, our, our entire existence is built upon La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So shouldn't our marriage be built upon the same thing? At-Tawheed and Al-Iman should be built upon At-Tawheed and should be built upon Iman. And uh, there are many other benefits we can take the issue of muhtathat uh, al-umur, keeping away from the innovations and the things that are newly introduced into Islam. Every bid'ah is a misguidance. And how many things are there? You know, in terms of bid'ah, in terms of innovation, definitely marriage is one where it comes out. Marriage, funerals are, are two where, you know, all the innovations come out. So many innovations come out. So many, so much haram, so much copying the non-Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said an authentic hadith. وَمَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever resembles a people is one of them. Resembles them in their worship, in their things that are unique to them. You know, subhanAllah, we have people dressing up like Christians, standing at the altar, Muslims giving vows to each other. We have Muslims behaving like Hindus to the point where the Hindu couldn't tell whether it's a Hindu marriage or a Muslim marriage except for the fact that the guy's name is Ahmed and the woman's name is Fatima. You can't tell any difference between them. They might the same culture, the same traditions, the same dresses, the same clothing, the same behavior in their marriage. So we keep away from all of these muhtathat al-umur. And Wallahi will give you a piece of advice. I believe Wallahi it is appropriate to give here. And I believe that it's indicated by Khutbat al-Hajjah. And that is that if a couple can make their wedding day a day of obedience to Allah and a day that doesn't have muhtathat al-umur, doesn't have the innovations in it, then inshallah ta'ala their wedding will be mubarak, will be blessed by the permission of Allah which It will be a zawaj, a nikah, which is mubarak. It will be blessed by Allah jalla fi ula. If they, Because that day is a day where so many people compromise. A woman, she's worn strict hijab. On that day, la hijab, no separating between the men and the women. The, there are people coming in. He's saying, I'm her uncle. I'm not, you know, this. And he, she doesn't know him from Adam. And he comes in and he's sitting with her and the husband's brother is feeding a cake and all kinds of muharramat ma anzalallahu biha min sultan. Allah never sent any authority for any of it. So if they can make that day a day of obedience to Allah and obedience to His Messenger, and if they did wrong, they make tawbah and they come back to Allah and they resolve for their children's marriages, they will not get married like that. And they keep away from the innovations and the bid'ah, then inshaAllah ta'ala, Allah will bless them in their marriage by His permission subhanahu wa ta'ala. To continue, marriage is an act, we said. Uqtatun nikah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a contract. And contracts have a very special place in the sight of Allah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the first ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu awfu bil'uqud. Uhillat lakum bahimatul an'ami illa ma yutla alaykum ghayra muhilli sayidi wa antum hurum inna Allah yahkumu ma yurid. O you who believe, fulfill your agreements. Carry out your agreements. All of your agreements. Some of the ulama, they said the whole of Islam is in this ayah. Awfu bil uqud. Everything in Islam. Your agreements with Allah. Your agreements in terms of the sharia, what you promise to do. All of your mu'amalat you have with people. All of the ibadat and the mu'amalat can be summarized by the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya ayuhalladheena amanu. Awfu bil uqud. Stick to your agreements. This is an act and you have to fulfill that agreement on both sides. The husband and the wife, they have to fulfill that agreement on both sides. So it's, I want to just to go on to talk about this issue of conditions and agreements in the marriage contract and that these, this is a contract that has to be fulfilled because Allah said, Awfu bil uqud. In Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 58, Allah Azza wa Jal said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّوا الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ نِعِمَّا يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Allah commands you that when it comes to the amanat Now how do we know marriage is an amana? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said You took them Amanillah. In some of the narrations, be amanatillah. You took them by Allah's amana. They became your wives by Allah's amana. When it comes to the amanat, Allah commands you that you give those amanat. You render the trust to the people that you they are due to. Now, here, marriage is an amana between you and Allah. In the sense that you have to fulfill the amana before Allah. And it's an amana in terms of the wife's uh, family that they gave their, their, their daughter uh, to you as an amana. And it's an amana in terms of your relationship with your wife that you're irresponsible for her as the head of the household. You have responsibility over her. Then you use that responsibility in the way that is right. That's an amana. Allah commands you with regard to the amanat that you return those amanat to those they are due to. وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَنْ تَحْكُمُ بِالْعَدْلِ And when you judge between people, you judge in justice. So we said that marriage is an act and Allah commands you to fulfill awfu bil uqud Fulfill your agreements. And marriage is an amana. And Allah Azza wa Jal commands you that when it comes to the amanat, you look after them and you, you, you fulfill them to the people that they are due to. Uqba ibn Amir radiallahu an. He said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ أَحَقَّ الشَّرْطِ أَنْ يُوفَى بِهِ مَا اسْتَحْلَلْتُمْ بِهِ الْفُرُوجِ Uqbat ibn Amir, he said, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the most deserving of all conditions for you to fulfill are those that make the private parts halal. Subhanallah. The most deserving of conditions. So we talked, Allah said it's an act. Allah said, awfu bil uqud. Allah said it's an amana. Allah said, inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. And here it's a shart. It's a condition. And we know the Prophet ﷺ said, al-muslimuna ala shurutihim. The Muslims have to fulfill the conditions they agree to. And in the conditions, and this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, the most deserving of all conditions to be fulfilled are those that make the private parts halal, i.e. those conditions that form a part of the nikah. Now that could be uh, implicit conditions, that is the hukuk of zawjain, the rights of the husband and the wife, and it could be the conditions that are made in addition. Because one of the things that can exist in the aqt al-nikah, like all mu'amalat, there can be shurut idafiyah, Additional conditions which are added. Additional conditions. And that could form, some of you will not have that in your marriage contracts, meaning your marriage contracts will be like, a, if the word is right, vanilla. You know, no, nothing added. You know, just plain uh, contracts. And those, then in that case, the shurut are the shurut that Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to us the basic conditions, the hukuq, the rights of the husband and the wife, which we're going to come to. But it may be that there are conditions. 
And there could be conditions in the contract. People put certain things. The condition is such and such. The condition is such and such. And that condition could come from the wife. It could come from the husband. Either could make conditions upon the other. So it is important that if these conditions are made, they are the most deserving of all conditions to be fulfilled. They're the most deserving of all conditions. And that doesn't have to be always additional conditions. It can also be the inherent and implicit conditions that exist within the nikah in terms of the rights of the husband and the wife, the amana, that the act itself, the, con the contract itself, and so on. But many people do have additional conditions in their marriage contracts. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about these additional uh, conditions. As I said, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, and the hadith is in Jami' al-Tirmidhi. It's also a similar wording. It's also mentioned in Abi Dawood, that one from Abi Hurairah, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, As-sulhu ja'izun bayn al-Muslimin illa sulhan harrama halalan aw ahal harama wal-Muslimun ala shurutihim illa shartan harrama halala aw ahal harama. The Prophet ﷺ said, making sulh, making, and we're going to come to sulh in marriage later on, like making a peaceful agreement. Um, there's a word for it, like a good-natured agreement. Or making peace is permissible between the Muslims, except for an agreement which makes haram something that was halal, or makes halal something that was haram. And Muslims are bound by the conditions they agree to unless it is a condition that makes haram something halal or makes halal something haram. Muslims are bound, are bound by conditions. When you sign the terms and conditions of a contract, al-Muslimuna ala shurutihim, you are bound by those conditions unless there is a condition that makes something halal haram or something haram halal. So it's very important that the conditions you agree to in the nikah, you are bound by them. You have to stick to them. Unless there is something which makes haram halal or halal uh, haram. This is further clarified by the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, said, I'm just going to quote a part of it. He said, أما بعد فما بال أقوام يشترطون شروطا ليست في كتاب الله ما كان من شرط ليس في كتاب الله عز وجل فهو باطل وإن كان مئة شرط كتاب الله أحق وشرط الله أوثق The hadith in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Aisha رضي الله عنها and this part of the hadith that we want to quote the Prophet ﷺ said to continue What is the matter with some people? That they put down conditions These conditions are not in the book of Allah they're not in the book of Allah. Whatever condition is made to any mu'amala, any kind of uh, interaction, whatever condition is made that is not in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal is false, i.e. it is invalid. Even if it, there are a hundred conditions, the book of Allah is more deserving and the conditions of Allah are, more, are stronger and more tightly, you're more tightly bound to them. So here we take a number of benefits. First of all, it's not allowed for there to be any extra stipulated conditions that go against the Book of Allah. And the Book of Allah includes the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ here because Allah ﷺ said in his book, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever the Messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he commands you to stay away from, prohibits you from, then abstain from it. So Allah ﷺ included the commands of the Prophet ﷺ within the, within the commands of the Qur'an. In other words, the Qur'an commands you to follow the, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So if there's a condition that goes against the Qur'an or goes against the sunnah, then this condition is falsehood. And likewise, if it goes against ijma' consensus, because the Prophet ﷺ told us that our ummah, this ummah, will not gather together upon falsehood. So all of these are included. If there's a condition that goes against the Book of Allah, or the sunnah, or the consensus of the Muslims, this condition is batil, it's invalid. Even if a hundred of them are written down, a hundred of them are written down, the book of Allah is more deserving. And the condition of Allah is awthaq. And from here we can understand that when we say about condition, uh, about the most important conditions to follow are those that make the private parts halal, that here from the conditions are shartullah, the conditions that Allah laid down. 
they are the strongest and the most heavy and the most weighty are the conditions that Allah Azza wa Jal laid down. But if you make additional conditions, those conditions cannot go against the Book of Allah or against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi or against that which the Muslims have unanimously agreed upon. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta'ala, he said uh, in a statement explaining this, he said, man ishtarata fi al-waqfi aw al-itqi aw al-hiba aw al-bay' aw al-nikah aw al-ijarah aw al-nadhar aw ghayri thalik shurutan tukhalifu ma katabahu Allahu ala ibadih. He said, I'll just translate this part. He said, whoever makes a condition in a waqf, like uh, something which is given uh, in terms of it becomes like a charitable trust or itq, freeing a slave or a gift or a business transaction or nikah, marriage or renting or an oath or anything else they make conditions that go against what Allah has made obligatory over his servants they go against what Allah has made obligatory over his Servants, he then said, بحيث تتضمن تلك الشروط الأمر بما نهى الله عن أو النهي عما أمر به أو تحليل ما حرمه أو تحريم ما حلله فهذه الشروط باطلة باتفاق المسلمين في جميع العقود. He said, how does this be such that these conditions entail commanding something which Allah forbade or forbidding something which Allah commanded or making halal something Allah made haram or making haram something Allah made halal these conditions are batila they are invalid they are false they are worthless by the consensus of the Muslims in every single contract so that includes the contract of an nikah that includes the contract of nikah so in the contract of nikah any conditions are made that the what that condition entails even if the wording but the entailed that the tadam what it entails what it contains is to command something Allah prohibited or prohibit something Allah commanded or make something halal that Allah made haram or make haram what Allah made halal these conditions are batila. They are completely invalid as though they never existed in the first place. And this is a matter of ijma, of consensus among the Muslims. So what have we done so far? We have, uh, in this particular segment of the course, we've taken a look at the aqt, the contract of the marriage. And we've taken a look at what that contract really is built upon and what it entails. So we're now ready, inshallah ta'ala, in the next episode to go on to talk about the huquq, the rights of the husband and the wife, the rights that are equal and how the family structure is based in terms of the responsibilities in the household and who is responsible for who and how the decision-making process is made and what the rights of the spouses are. So that's our next portion, inshallah ta'ala. And then after that, we're going to go on to an nushuz marital discord, and how we deal with it. And then inshallah ta'ala, we're ready to move to a whole new segment of, uh, uh, of the course, which would be to do with, inshallah ta'ala, to do with children and raising children and the relationship between parents and children, children and parents. And that's coming up in future uh, episodes and parts of this course brought to you by al madrasatul al-Umariya on the topic of the Muslim family. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal made it easy for me to mention and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.